This video describes the force velocity relationship of the muscle. Now the force length relationship of the muscle talked about the number of connections. The force velocity relationship of the muscle talks about the rate of cross bridge connections. So once again, let's imagine that my, my arm is a myosin molecule. Again, the stick is an actin molecule. As we said before, myosin molecule comes up, attaches onto the active site of the actin with energy, pulls it across. When the ATP is changed to ADP, release, snap back, grab again, more energy, pull it across. Now, when we're doing fast contractions, what is going to occur is that the rate at which this occurs is going to be a lot faster. So we will snap up, pull it across, snap back, grab, pull, snap back, grab, pull, snap back. So at faster rates, we have less connections. So once again, as I mentioned previously, an isometric contraction will have the strongest con contraction because there's no cycling. The rate is very slow. So we have about more than 50% connections. But with a rapid connection, then we have a number, very many, of our myosin molecules detaching and in the process or the transition of grabbing another piece of actin and then detaching again. So therefore, when we're trying to lift weights, Heavy weights have to be moved slowly because we need to have more connections. We want a slower rate of cross bridge cycling. So for example, if I'm lifting a heavy weight, I cannot go quickly with this weight because I need many more connections in order to move that weight. However, if I go to a lighter weight, I can move at a faster speed. So that's the first weight was 50 pounds, the second weight was 30 pounds, now I go to 20 pounds, and you can see the rate at which I can move 20 pounds, and then finally a 10 pound weight can move very rapidly. The reason I can move a 10 pound weight very rapidly is with a small mass I don't need a lot of connections. Therefore the system can concentrate on the transition or the rate of cycling of the myosin and actin molecules. So if we relate this back to different implements that you might use, then for instance if we were throwing a baseball, you can throw a baseball at a very quick rate. If you're going to throw a softball, a softball will force your arm to move slower because it weighs a bit more. If you're going to throw a grenade or a shot put, you have to move even slower than that because the increased weight is going to cause you to have to have more connections and the rate at which you're going to cycle is going to slow down. If you're playing racket sports, the fastest racket sports are the ones with the smallest implements. So if you're playing table tennis, then you know how fast those people can move. Badminton, very fast again. You move to squash. Now you have a slightly larger racket and a slightly heavier ball. Although they do move fast, they don't move as fast as badminton players. And then compare tennis players to squash players, to badminton players, again, the racket speed is high, but not as high as the smaller implements because you've got a heavier tennis ball compared to a badminton shuttle. So depending on the task that you need to do, it will be determined by the rate at which you cycle your myosin and actin. Therefore, slow, if you're lifting heavy weights, you need slow cycling and have to have as many myosin and actin molecules connected as possible to get the greatest force. If you're going to play a sport or do an action that involves a lightweight, then you don't need as many connections and therefore you can cycle or transition the myosin actin very quickly and you can move a lightweight very, very quickly.